I have even more amazing AI news for you. Today I will show you prompt free diffusion different AI video methods and text to 3D that you can use today. Let's get started. Also, I want to start this video by pointing out in my last video about the plugin for Photoshop. Several people asked me in the comment, do you need automatic 1111 for that? And what is that? So here, check out this video that shows you how to install automatic 1111. And then you can use that plugin to create AI images in Photoshop. The first thing I want to show you today is called prompt free diffusion. And this is basically exactly what it sounds like. You don't need a prompt anymore to create beautiful AI images. Now, the way this method works is that you give a stylistic input as an image and then also a control net method. So you have a lot of control over the output and both of them are fused together in this process. So in this example here, you can see that there is a painting of a landscape with a house in it. And then we have here a Kenny map with a different house. And this is output by different stable diffusion models. So you also get different styles in there, different colors. And you don't need to jump through the hoops of all kinds of different methods to just transfer that style into different images. Now, this is super important to keep consistency and to give you more examples, but in the exact same style. If you, for example, want to have a storyboard or you want to make a comic book, this consistency is really key. Here in that example, you can also see that this works with all kinds of open pose methods. For example, with this scribble where we have a simple drawing of a landscape and then the style of one landscape is applied to that again for stories. This is really cool. In the other examples, you can also see that this works with a depth map with MLSD, which is really great for architecture. You also have again here a Kenny map example. Now, Kenny is of course also good to create people, to create characters, to create all kinds of objects. So this has a very wide range of ways it can be applied. Another cool thing here is that this works with open pose. And in this example, you can see that also face and hand tracking. So the full open pose is being applied to the image. And this can create then from one image different perspectives of the same character. And you can see that it is somewhat consistent to the input style. Now, this project isn't fully released yet. There is an explanation on how you can install the demo on your drive. And also it shows you what kind of of models you need to download and put into the different folders. So this works for you. But on the top of the page, there is a demo link for hugging face. And when you click on that, this is loading a Gradio UI where this is running online on the cloud. You don't have to pay anything for that. You can try this out either by loading their example project. So when you scroll down, you see here a long list of different examples. When you click on them, everything is loaded up here with the settings into the UI. But you can, of course, also upload your own images here for the stylistic input also for the control net methods to see if this gives you a correct output. The next thing I want to show you today is a little but maybe very useful tool. It's a stable diffusion prompt reader. Now this is a reader that works on its own independent from different web UIs and it has some extra functions in it. So as you can see here, this provides a very simple to understand UI that shows you all of the information from that image and also below has some added editing methods for this information. And this is where this could be very useful. One functionality that really stands out to me here is that you're able to remove the prompt from the image. Now that can be useful to you if you want to share images online, but they have, for example, private information in there. For example, the names of people that are rendered in the image, but you don't want to have that online. You can remove the complete information from the image before you upload it. Also, you can export the prompt information to a text file from the image that is also very useful. And here in this box, you can see that this supports the most used UIs now because this has automatic 11.11 in it. I'm pretty sure it also supports flat 
diffusion because that should be the exact same format but most of them are supported for the png format not so much for the jpeg format below that you have a guide to install that on mac os and windows now the next news i have for you today is called drag your gan and this really reminds me of photoshop puppet warp that you also can use in after effects what this is doing is that you can set a start and an end point in an image and from that it's going to create a video animation where it is moving the content of the image for a video in the way that you defined and on their page they have two really interesting examples now of course one of the examples is to move a character around to move their limbs to turn their head to animate their face close their eyes things like that this is super useful especially because this gives you a lot of control over what should happen in your video animation for example creating complex action scenes and of course because this is ai you can use this in all kinds of different artistic styles for example simulating 3d animation digital painting styles and of course anime so i really can't wait to see the first fan made anime short films anime movies that would be really cool but I can really also imagine that this has a huge application in gaming, for example, in 2D games where you want to animate the characters. So here you can do really interesting motions and then crop out the background and put that into your video game to control the characters. Of course, other than just moving characters around, they also show an example where the clothing of a character is changed in all kinds of different styles. And again, this can have commercial applications applications where for example on a shopping page you can see different styles of the same clothing morphing around but also of course for your private artistic passion projects where you can do really cool things and I can really see this being used for example on film projects like the morphing armor that Iron Man is wearing things like that could be really mind-blowing somewhat similar to that is the next news here it's called text to performer now what this does is it creates a short video in which you describe the character the clothing of the character and the movement you want to see and in some of these examples the movement is rather complex like a person making a 360 turn to show them from all sides as you can see the style here is realistic mostly it looks like it is a demo for a fashion page but again I can really imagine this being used in video games in movies in all kinds of different ways getting closer for us to describing our ideas and this becoming a short film a little game create our own worlds just from text just from our imagination now when you look at these examples it's absolutely surprising that this is working without video input without image input without control net input just text and Still, there is not really much flickering and the character and also the clothing stay very consistent while the character is moving around and even turning their body. The next news is from Latent Labs. They have developed a technique to create 3D from text input and you can use this link from that tweet to join their Discord and there you can try the method out. Now the amazing thing is when you go into their Discord you can see the other 3D models that their users have created and from the preview they are fairly complex. Also they are colorized at the same time so there is a low resolution texture on there for this stage of development it is the best i have seen so far so it's really surprising you can download the 3d meshes by clicking on send mesh and opening that up for example in blender or other 3d software and last but not least there is now an app for chat gpt i've waited for this so long now it's finally here but there is a little caveat with that they released it for ios which for me i completely don't understand because first of all they are funded by microsoft so you would think that android would be the most important system but also ios is only used on 30 percent of the market why the rest of the 70 percent is android but be sure that you go to this page and click on the link for the app store because there are several fake apps out there so you don't want to download the wrong app 
Let me know in the comments which of these tools you like the most. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.